don't edit that into anything. <laughs> welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to an episode of experimentation. They say that uh, the, it's always more interesting watching people on a journey uh, than it is them presenting you with a fait accompli. I'm not interested in watching self-help videos with some fool who is standing beside his Ferrari in his mansion and all of that jazz. I'm more interested in watching the guy who's up and coming and learning today. I'm going to try something I've never done before. I lie. I have burned several guitars. <laughs> Ow! I just threw it into the forge. <laughs> I'm going to burn this guitar. I can't believe I just slammed it into the forge like that. Uh, this is a uh, one of our descendant guitars. It's a one series technically because it doesn't have a top on it. But uh, it was made out of a piece of roughly 100 year old, i.e. it was felled over 100 years ago. Uh, and I think it is hemlock or something like that. But the irony and interest in it is that it was a roof beam in a fire station that was recently, uh, in the last couple of years, pulled down in Dorchester near us. And uh, I have wanted to use this Japanese technique for preserving wood uh, for quite some time. And basically, they literally burn it, um, wire brush away the excess basically, and then uh, put some oil finish on it. And that sounds like fun. And, I, and it looks really cool. Um, I've wanted to do this for years. I wanted to do something called the sunburnt finish. And... Here we are, and uh, I'm doing it. This is my part-built, soon-to-be-completed, I hope, forge. And I thought that would probably be a good place to start. That is so cool. doesn't want to burn inside that corner. Okay, now we've actually got... Trying to get into that corner, I'm actually getting fire now. Just for a sense of completion.
<laughs> All right then. Okay, this is far too fun. It smells like caramel or something. Absolutely awesome. So, essentially, yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, no way, that was the last bit I burnt, that was hot. So, I could have just gone very lightly, but that would have been less fun. Oh no, wait, there was one last thing I wanted to do. This is our guitar finishing oil. Apparently flammable. I know some of the component parts are flammable. And this is going to be, actually, let's do it somewhere where it's not going to, uh, where'd the lighter go? Okay, so. I just want to see what happens. I want to see what happens if we actually burn the finish in. I suspect this probably shouldn't be breathed in though. I'm enjoying this far too much. Okay. I don't have any tissue paper in here. <sighs> well, it's still there and hasn't really... No. Anyway, okay, so. Come in. Wire brush the excess off. This is, essentially we've burnt away We've burnt away the softer grain. And now we're removing that. So we're coming up with a lovely tactile and very warm feel. Okay, this is gonna take a little while. I will leave you here for now. Oh, I wonder what it's gonna do on the... Yeah, there we go. I love that checking. That's just really cool. Next time I'm doing it out of a single piece. Well, I don't know actually. I think I've got a lot of wood. I've, I've got quite a few guitars worth of this, this exact fire station wood. I think I'm gonna do a series, a series of these in this finish in this wood taken from a fire station is irony just not awesome anyway leave me alone i'm having far too much fun even this bit is fun and i don't quite know why okay always go with the grain Almost. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering what happens if I leave the raw burnt bit. If we have a little bit of uh, finishing oil. Okay, you go there, keep that slightly soft. Now the whole point is that once you finish this, you flood it in, in oil and the oil soaks in and you've got a you've got a finish. I'm just wondering how much of that is gonna still continue to rub away. 
because I'd love to have an actual burnt burst type effect. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna. It's coming away, so. Crikey. Alright, I'm just gonna reburn that area just a little bit. Far too much fun to be done in public, I'll tell you. Um, all right. So essentially, I have a still warm and really awesome looking guitar. So the next stage is to flood it with some Crimson Guitars finishing oil. which I think we should do in the slightly more comfortable studio upstairs. Follow me! That sounded a little bit too much like acting, but I really am just having a ball. Okay, I mustn't forget that we have flammable things that aren't in fire cabinets, but let's go upstairs. My studio, let's have some fun. Guitar finishing oil formulated here. No, formulated by two chemists who don't work here, but were working for me. Uh, and it's excellent and uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is the bit. Essentially, I'm just gonna flood it. Oh, that's too pretty. Ha. All right, come on then. This looks like Wingo. I'm gonna need some more oil. So basically we're flooding into the guitar. And uh, it's going in deep. And we're just gonna wipe away any excess. Yeah, I need to go get some more oil. I'm pouring this on rather than uh, dabbing it. Because uh, I don't want to get soot in my uh, in my oil. Okay. Now the whole thing is that uh, the finishing oil seals the the soot, the burnt particles in. Uh, I might have to apply a couple of layers. We'll see. And uh, it should seal it in entirely so that you don't get covered in black every time you play the guitar. Because if that happened, it would almost be not worth owning one of these guitars. <laughs> that is just, that is an awesome finish. Okay, so apparently what this process does, ooh, I have a, I have a big long splinter there. Apparently what this process does is it burns, uh, it solidifies the wood, it gets rid of, uh, uh, I wanna say free, radi free radicals, but that's wrong entirely. It gets rid of um, the resins, etc. inside there, it cooks it all off. Uh, crystallizes it, stabilizes the wood, 
so that it doesn't shrink as much. This is basically a quick and dirty way of creating torrified wood, which uh, currently people are paying a premium for. And uh, yeah, and then the oil finishes it off and uh, we have a stunner of an instrument. Okay, so basically now I'm going to apply another few coats, rub away all of the excess oil, and then maybe do that a couple of times and we will be back once that has happened uh, to see what the final result is. Uh, this may be in a day or two. I might have to do two or three, two or three or four coats um, to stop the black rubbing off. So yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, a little bit more in there. Now the trick with guitar finishing oil as with many, many finishing oils, is to rub on as much as you can, and then before it goes solid, rub off all the excess. It's done its job, especially ours. Uh, we formulated it to penetrate as much as possible. So it's done its job. You want to leave, you want to remove anything that's on the surface, because that would cure and create a film finish, which is not the point with an oil. You want it in the wood, in the top layer of the wood. Now this is coming up with some staining and that's not what we want either. So it is gonna be several coats. I'm gonna leave this to cure for five or six hours. Well, looking at the clock actually. I'm gonna leave this to cure overnight and put another coat of oil on in the morning and do that until the tissue starts coming back clean. It's still warm. <laughs> it's still warm from the fire. <laughs> uh. I love my life. I wonder what would happen if you burnt off the excess oil.